So, are there any uh, famous stories that George would have known around the supernatural that actually concern the fan, the, the, the family, the clan? Well, Mark, I know you're very interested in vampires. Tends to be. Uh, yes. Uh, now, the Irish for vampire is Dergudur, the Red Drinker. And here is a book which might be of interest to you and is has a story in it which is connected to the O'Cahans, which George O'Mullen would undoubtedly uh, know. It may well have formed one of the strands. Of Dracula. Of Dracula. How brilliant. Mark wants to know more family stories of the O'Cahans and the O'Mullens that his great-great-great-grandfather would have passed down. Hello, Bob. Mark. Pleasure to you? meet you. Very well, thank you. Well, welcome to Glenol. Thank you. You'll see a few headstones. Yeah, familiar names. Which are familiar names. <laughs> Mullen, Mullen, Mullen. Uh, absolutely. Kane. Mark's joined Bob Curran at St Joseph's Church in the village of Glenallen. Bob is a folklorist, as well as a storyteller. People like George O'Mullen would have imbibed the traditions of the area. We're beginning to look at stories, myths, folklore, and bits and pieces of history, all fused together to give the people a sense of belonging and to give them their identity. And I suppose they get more and more embroidered as generations pass. Well, they? you see, these are oral stories, Mark. Uh, and in order to remember the stories, you had to have wonderful facts. The more spectacular the story, the better they remembered it. And uh, in this area, you're uh, surrounded by supernatural. So are there any uh, famous stories that George would have known around the supernatural that actually concern the, fan, the, the, the family, the clan? Well, Mark, I know you're very interested in vampires. Tends to be. Uh, yes. Uh, now, the Irish for vampire is Dergudur, the Red Drinker. And here is a book which might be of interest to you and is, has a story in it which is connected to the O'Cahans, which George O'Mullen would undoubtedly uh, know. It may well have formed one of the strands. Of Dracula. Of Dracula. How brilliant. So you think Stoker would have known that? Well, in this area, the word Drachula means bad blood. No. Yes. <laughs> That's too good. Where am I looking? You're looking, I think, about page 64. The tale of Abhatach. Awartach. Awartach. The legend comes from the townland of Slotavity, near the town of Garva in North Derry, which, though it is only a few miles from the town, is still a fairly isolated spot. It lies in the Glenullen Valley and is cut off on three sides by the beginning of the Sperrins mountain range. In the fifth and sixth centuries, this valley was a patchwork of tiny kingdoms, each ruled by individual kings who were little more than local warlords. So this vampire story concerns an O'Kane. It does, yeah. It would have been a story known to my great, great, great grandfather, Mullen. Uh, yeah. And Slaw Tavity is still there. You can go and have a look at it. Before the sun goes down. I would go you there pretty it. quick, Mark. <laughs> now, whatever you do, Mark, don't try to lift the stone or the, the vampire will get out again. OK. Those under the harsh rulership of our attack wished to get rid of him, and because of his dark powers, they were too frightened to attack him themselves. So they hired another chieftain called Cachem, or Cathain, O'Kane, to come and kill him for them, which he did, slaying Aotak and burying him standing up, a befitting burial for an Irish chieftain. The next day, however, Aotak was back, demanding a basin filled with blood from the wrists of his subjects, in order, says the legend, to sustain his vile corpse. Puzzled, Cahan went to a holy man and asked him the reason. 
The holy man thought for a moment. The evil Artak is not dead, he replied at length, but he is in a state of suspension due to his dark arts. He has become one of the Neem Marb and cannot therefore be killed, but he can be prevented from rising again. In order to do this, the hermit told him, Khan must slay our attack with a sword made of yew wood. He must bury him upside down. He must surround the grave site with thorns, and he must place a great stone directly above the spot where the vampire lay. The grave is still there. It is said that the thorns that Cachan placed around the site have grown together into a thorn tree that grows above the remnants of the sepulchre. Even today, local people will not approach the field after nightfall. Which, looking at the state of the sun, means that we should probably get out of here. George O'Mullen was a brilliant storyteller, so I don't want to over romanticize it, but it sort of feels like maybe that's where I get it from. Somehow there's a little slant towards all that which comes from being of this stock way, way, way back. Um, I'd like to think so. Well, that might be just me romanticizing, I don't know. It might be just because I spent too much time watching horror films as a child, but it's... Um, it feels right. It feels like it's coming from somewhere, and I, I'm, I rather like that. And all that uh, brilliant stuff, y you can feel it, you know, it still feels possible in, on a dark night like this in the middle of Northern Ireland. <laughs>